St. John the Philosopher here. With the approaching release of The Flash and the Aquaman sequel due to arrive in December, we're coming upon the end of this iteration of the DC movie universe. People have hated some of the movies, love some, and there's one movie that people both hate and love at the same time. But suffice to say, it's been a bumpy road. I have a similarly mixed bag of feelings about the DCEU under Zack Snyder's leadership, so as I look back in retrospect over the films, asking myself where exactly things went sideways, I keep coming back to one particular scene that I think is representative of the main problem with the Snyderverse. 2013's Man of Steel had so much potential. We had visual effects finally capable of making the impossible and epic scenes depicted in the comics look great on film. We had a great TV depiction of the character from which to draw inspiration in the form of Superman the Animated Series, Justice League, and Justice League Unlimited cartoon shows that ran from 1996 to 2004. We had tremendous talent behind the camera with Zack Snyder's visionary direction and the Dark Knight trilogy's writing team of David S. Goyer and Christopher Nolan doing the story and script. We had Henry freaking Cavill, the square-jawed muscle-bound king of the nerds, who, given the right material, could have become one of the greatest to ever don the S, in my opinion. And not to mention the incredible supporting cast in the likes of Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, Kevin Costner, Diane Lane, Lawrence Fishburne, Christopher Maloney, Russell Crowe. How did they pay for this movie? Man of Steel had all of that going for it, but there was one huge problem no one seemed to really understand the character. That isn't to say they were the type of hacks we so often find attached to our favorite franchises that hate the original and think they can improve it by injecting their favorite socio-political messaging. That's not this. I think I understand what the filmmakers are really going for here. I could almost hear them in the writing room asking, how did Clark Kent become Superman? And in order to show that character arc, they attempted to work their way backwards from the Superman Clark Kent we all know and love towards some lesser incomplete version of him that has to go through something. And in so doing, they would also have to reverse engineer his environment, influences, and upbringing. I think this approach could have worked for any number of other DC characters. Hey, it seemed to have worked for Batman in the Dark Knight trilogy. So is it any wonder that they figured they had the secret recipe and felt they could use it everywhere in the genre? The problem is that Superman isn't just any other character. Superheroes can often be described in one of three primary constructions. First are the ordinary people whose lives are turned upside down by getting powers through happenstance. What if a bookish school kid gained superpowers? What if a fearless test pilot gained superpowers? In the second construction, you have relatively ordinary people who turn themselves into something extraordinary. What if a traumatized billionaire decided to become a vigilante? What if a traumatized billionaire decided to become a vigilante? What if a traumatized billionaire decides, oh, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. In the last construction, you've got the powerful people from elsewhere who come to our world. What if a demigod came to earth? What if a powerful alien came to live among us? It's easy to see how you can develop a story of becoming for those types of characters. The tales of the transition from test pilot to interstellar cop, from pampered rich kid to living weapon of vengeance, from stranger in a strange land to resident hero, all kind of come tumbling out of those character descriptions. But Superman falls into a different category altogether. If you notice, all those examples are of people who lived and operated one way, but were then forced to develop and adapt into a new way of being. But Clark Kent is always, and has always been, just Clark Kent. Sure, he's an alien from another world, but every living memory he has is from his life on Earth. He's never known a time without his superpowers. One might look at the creation of the Superman persona in the same way as other characters' decisions to become superheroes, but even then, Superman is just an extension of who Clark already is. He's always been Superman. At best, the story of becoming, in the case of Superman, is just one about growing up. Everything that made him Superman came from his parents, and it's apparent on some level that the talent that worked on Man of Steel understood that too. But that's actually why this scene, a brief conversation between father and son, came out so wrong. To recap, a young Clark, maybe a freshman in high school, has just saved a bus full of his classmates from drowning after an accident, and the mother of one of the kids has come out to address the superpowered elephant in the room. 
Clark goes and sits outside to contemplate his place in the world, as teenagers are wont to do, and Jonathan comes out to do the whole dad thing. I just wanted to help. I know you did, but we talked about this. Right? <sighs> right? We talked about this. You have... Oh, Clark, you have to keep this side of yourself a secret. What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. There's more at stake here than just our lives, Clark, or the lives of those around us. When the world... When the world finds out what you can do, it's gonna change everything. Or, our beliefs, our notions of what it means to be human, everything. Many a commentator has already taken on the worst portion of the exchange here. It's pretty obvious how it doesn't fit with what we'd expect previous incarnations of Pa Kent to say, but what really gets me is the larger context behind that inauspicious use of the word maybe. This version of Jonathan Kent is obsessed to the point of delusion with the grandiose. Plenty of parents in real life like to believe their kid has what it takes to change the world. Many of those parents are correct. And to be clear, Jonathan Kent is absolutely correct as no other parent has ever been. Except these guys, of course. But he's so worried about somehow messing up that grand future purpose that he's willing to let people die in the meantime, even himself. The film wants us to see this as noble and ultimately right, but pretty much all of the other versions of Superman have spoken against this kind of thinking. There's a better version of this scene. When Jonathan comes out to Clark, he doesn't start by scolding him. Instead, Clark offers the apology, mistakenly thinking he's in trouble for having potentially revealed himself. I know I'm not supposed to, Pa, but yada yada yada. And Jonathan asks this time as a rhetorical question, what were you supposed to do, let them die? And Clark knows the answer is no. Jonathan would tell him that he's proud of him, that it's good to know he's raising the type of man that doesn't hesitate to help when he knows he can. He'd reiterate the importance of understanding the old biblical adage, to whom much is given, much is required. But that's not what we got. Instead, Man of Steel created in Clark the false notion that the nebulous and unknowable great future is what he's waiting for, that he has to go searching for that purpose and that it's certainly not about just saving a few people here or there. This misstep in establishing Superman's character also manages to taint the other movies in this universe. In Batman v Superman, Clark looks put upon in his heroics, as though each rescue is simply a distraction from his higher purpose. The people reach out to him in awe and gratitude, and he looks bored by it all. Instead of the smiling face of a farm boy from Kansas just happy to help, we get the constipated scowl of a guy who seems to think there are better things he could be doing with his time. And finally, in Justice League, we're told that Superman was a shining example, a beacon of hope, that even Batman considered him, quote, more human than I am. But we were never shown that in the context of the film. The filmmakers knew that Superman is the heart of the Justice League, that he's the shining beacon of righteousness around which DC's film universe needed to turn. But for some reason, they couldn't connect that to what makes Superman, Superman. And that's the down-home Judeo-Christian values instilled in him by his Midwestern parents. Here's hoping James Gunn doesn't make this same mistake. So what did you think about this video? Did you like the Superman they gave us in Man of Steel? Discuss in the comments. In the meantime, be sure to like, subscribe, and share for more videos just like this one. That's all for today. Goodbye, God bless, and we'll see you in another video.